Hey everybody, this will be uh, this will be a pretty quick one. So yeah, there are going to be reviews that actually show up here in the break room as opposed to the main channel, and mainly that's going to be for movies or TV shows that I think either don't really fit the remit of Council of Geeks and the sort of stuff I normally talk about there, or and or I don't have enough things to say about them that it feels like worth dedicating a, a whole review and I'd kind of be stalling to try and fill 10 minutes. So that's kind of the case with a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Um, so I went and saw this last night at time of recording um, with my partner Liz. We both enjoyed it. Uh, we both really liked Tom Hanks in the role. Actually, all the acting was quite good. Uh, if what you're gonna get from it depends on what you're going in for. If you want a movie about Fred Rogers, this is not that. If that's what you want, then you should have seen the documentary um, Won't You Be My Neighbor? which is amazing and I highly recommend if you want to know more about Fred Rogers, the man. That's not what this is. This is a fictionalized version of something that did happen, which was um, a journalist wrote a profile for Esquire magazine and the experiences he had in talking to and having repeated conversations with Fred Rogers basically changed the man's outlook on life. That did really happen. What was sort of the big t thing that tended to keep taking me out of the film was that the way that that end of the story kept happening, basically whenever it wasn't him sitting down with Fred Rogers and instead, you know, the what was going on in his other parts of his life, I'm like, this seems like a lot of dramatic license. And basically it was to the point that they don't have the journalist character have the name of the real guy. That's how much they changed it. And I mean, granted, I didn't know the full story front to back, but it just all felt so narratively convenient, which is not something that I'm always, unless it's like being driven by coincidence, that's not usually something I'll complain about in a completely fictionalized story, because that's what makes for a strong narrative through line. But if you're saying something's based off a true story, true stories aren't this narratively clean. And knowing that tends to take me out of them uh, as a result. And, uh, uh, Basically, while we were driving back from the movie theater, Liz was looking up, you know, comparing the real events and basically confirming that pretty much anything that had to do with Fred Rogers, while not everything that he said or every in, or every interaction he had happened actually with the journalist, pretty much all of them did happen and are verified things that happened. So all the depictions of Fred Rogers pretty much spot on. Those were things he said. Those were things he did. That was him. And then nearly everything dealing with the journalist is an exaggeration or made up. Which, again, for me, kind of took me out of it, but Tom Hanks is great in this. And also, fun side note, turns out Fred Rogers actually quite liked Tom Hanks' work. He particularly liked both Big and Forrest Gump, which makes a lot of sense given that those are very childlike characters. And Fred Rogers, one of his big things, his big piece of advice to adults is remember what it was like to be a child. So it makes sense that he would have liked Tom Hanks. And that kind of makes it a, a nice sort of, oh, and Tom Hanks is really phenomenal in this because he's playing a man who it would be very easy to just portray as a saint, but without ever dirtying him, without ever trying to gritty him up, he makes him feel human. You can see the layers. You can see that this is a man who does not express a great deal of anger, or frustration outwardly, but that doesn't mean he doesn't experience it. And there are little things in his performance and in his face that communicate that without ever making it seem like there was a side to Fred Rogers you didn't know. It never does that. It just makes it go like, no, the guy was human. He had depths. He admitted to them. He just processed them in a way that really worked for him. And that was great. And there's one moment, it's an odd moment. And when it first started, I was like, I don't, I don't know about this. But then it, it like committed to it. And I guess this is a minor spoiler. It's not a plot spoiler in any way, but if you intend to see the movie no matter what, as long as you know that it's not about Fred Rogers, it's more about the impact of Fred Rogers on people around him, then you will probably enjoy the movie, go and see it. That having been said, let me talk about this moment real quick. He's in a, rest in a restaurant with a journalist and he says, I want you to do an exercise with me. I want you to take a minute and just think about all the people whose love brought you into this world and made you who you are. And he goes quiet and the journalist goes quiet and the restaurant that they're in goes quiet. There is no 
ambient noise for a minute of the only things it show it shows the journalist but then for a very long shot it shows Fred Rogers and he's looking down the camera as if he's asking you in the audience to take this minute and it goes for the full minute of silence and I'm pretty dang sure everybody in that theater, myself included, found themselves doing exactly what it was that he was recommending we do. And that was magical, that moment. I wish I could say the rest of the movie lived up to it. It kind of doesn't. There's a lot of stuff that it does that's cute, but kind of gimmicky. The fact that any travel thing is done like with models, you know, the way that they would on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, the show. And it's, it's cute and it's fun and it's nice. It's a nice movie. But again, for me, if you want uh, the, the full Fred Rogers experience outside of that moment, because that moment was incredible, um, you you'd see the documentary. The documentary, I, I would, I, I can't sing its praises enough, and this was good. I probably would have enjoyed this more had I not already seen Won't You Be My Neighbor, uh, and gotten, I think, what felt like the more complete Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, um, film experience. But I don't regret having seen it. It was a good time. So that'll be it for this one, folks. Like I said, a little bit of a shorter sort of review sort of thing here, but it felt more fitting to put it here than over on the main channel. So that's it for today, and uh, stop on by next time you need a break.